Okay, good morning. I'm going to turn things over to the sheriff's office to start. Uh, good morning, Captain Josh Phillips here with Minneapolis County Sheriff's Office. Just to give you an update from an incident that occurred yesterday in the city. Uh, briefly, uh, two warrant task force officers from the sheriff's office were in the area of uh, South Prairie near the 400 block, um, and they heard what they thought was a gunshot. Uh, immediately when they, what drew their attention was that gunshot, they looked up, uh, they saw what appeared to be a gun sticking out a car window. Uh, they immediately reported that to Metro Communications, didn't see any uh, injuries from that incident, uh, followed that vehicle, um, and then relayed that information to other officers. Um, so uh, the Sioux Falls PD eventually picked up that pursuit right around 41st and Marion, where our task force officers continue to relay um, coordinates of where that the vehicle, suspect vehicle is going. I believe it is a 2008 Buick Lucerne. Uh, eventually, uh, that pursuit ended uh, right around 1026 AM at 22nd in Willow, where the suspect vehicle, the Buick Lucerne, uh, ran an intersection stop sign and crashed into a Chevy pickup. Uh, the individual in the Chevy pickup received, uh, I believe, um, some minor injuries from that, was transported, but in speaking to them yesterday, they'll fully recover from that. Uh, there was four occupants in the uh, suspect Buick, or the suspect vehicle, the Buick Lucerne. Uh, two of those individuals uh, fled the scene. Uh, one was apprehended by the task force and Sioux Falls Police Department um, immediately kind of after that incident. Uh, we're still currently looking for one individual that we believe is inside that motor vehicle. And two individuals stayed in the vehicle um, and were apprehended. Uh, so I'll give you a list of those individuals. Uh, the first one is Corbett, C-O-R-B-A-T, middle of initial of J, uh, last of Haran, H-E-R-O-N, who is a 19-year-old male um, from Sioux Falls. He's being charged with aggravated assault, possession of a firearm with altered serial number, uh, possession of a stolen vehicle, reckless discharge of a firearm. Uh, the second in individual is uh, Shalina, uh, S-H-A-L-E-N-A, -E middle of initial of C, uh, last of Alexander, is a 19-year-old female from Sioux Falls, uh, and she is being charged with possession of a stolen vehicle. Uh, the third individual is a 17-year-old male uh, from Sioux Falls, uh, charged with simple assault, uh, possession of a stolen vehicle, and fleeing from police. Uh, the third individual that we believe is involved has an outstanding warrant not related to this case, and that's for abuse or cruelty to a minor under the age of seven. Uh, first of Carissa, K-A-R-I-S-S-A, -S -S last of Becker, B-E-C-K-E-R, 22-year-old female from Sioux Falls. Um, we're still looking for Carissa, so we're asking for the public's assistance in helping locate her. Uh, we believe she's related to this incident. Um, so through the course of the investigation, uh, after the accident, the South Dakota Highway Patrol investigated the accident at that intersection. Uh, the Sioux Falls Police, Police Department, along with uh, deputies, continued to look for what we believe to be is Carissa, um, those individuals were all transported, Inter interviews were done. Uh, we went back to the scene um, and tried to speak to anybody that maybe was a witness of what occurred. Through the course of that investigation, uh, there was an assault that transpired just prior to the shooting, we believed, uh, where uh, we believe a 17-year-old male had punched an innocent bystander. Um, then there was an altercation after that. And before they fled the scene, uh, there was one round fired off, we believed, in, in the direction of maybe our victim. We're, we still are working on that. Um, and then our warrant task force deputies uh, were just in the area. They, they had nothing to do with this incident. There was no calls of the altercation. They were just basically driving by at the right time. Um, and then about 1.13, PM yesterday, uh, a citizen reported um, a gun near the intersection of 24th and South Lake Avenue. Um, that gun also had an altered serial number. Um, and so through the course of the investigation, 
forensics and, and other things, I think we'll be able to, to say that that gun is probably a match from the one used off of the 400 block of South Prairie. Um, in looking through the case, I believe the suspects in the, in the Buick also maybe hit a parked car. So that's in, in relation to this incident. No other um, reports. I don't think Sam or I have received anything else related to the pursuit. Uh, no other accidents other than the one at the intersection. And then I, I can't tell you exactly where they hit the park car at, but we can look that up if no one was in that vehicle. So no injuries reported other than the individual that was in the vehicle at uh, 22nd Willow. Uh, one individual, the suspects, was transported to the hospital and released back to us. So. Go ahead. Uh, are you guys releasing the name of the driver or is the driver the minor who was 17? Uh, we believe that's the driver is the minor. We, we're not quite sure on that. We're still working on who was the driver. We believe maybe that or the individual we're looking for. Um, and then do you guys have a description of Carissa? 22-year-old uh, female, um, and I, I don't have any other identifiers if, if you guys want to get uh, a photo of her and stuff, I think you can do that for her felony warrant that she has. So I'll try to provide some of that here later. Sorry. Anything else? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify one thing. Yep. So one gun was located in the vehicle. No. 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 So we, we never located uh, the gun from the incident on the foreign block. We observed one, what we believed to be a gun, and heard an audible uh, sound that would say that there was a shot fired. We searched that vehicle, did not find one. Several hours later, a gun matching the description was found on a sidewalk at about 113 on 24th and South Lake that we believe is the same gun ut utilized uh, just a couple hours prior. What's the process for like inves investigating, excuse me, investigating a, a gun with a altered serial number? I mean, how does And that so there, there's ways to, to recover that. Um, DNA, um, the serial number, there's ways to get that serial number back. Um, a lot of times we'll send that to the state lab and they have a process, a pretty uh, lengthy process that is able to uh, help us with that. There's ways if you recover rounds, not specifically in this case, you can match up rounds that have been fired um, and to see if they've been fired from that gun. So if you were able to collect a round um, and match it up to the round that's in the gun, and then you may be able to say that those rounds came from that same gun. So there's a couple different processes you can do. Are, are altered serial numbers a pretty common thing? Is that something you guys typically find with weapons here in Sioux Falls, or uh, is that more, less common? I'd say um, over the years there's been more of them, yes. And that's usually ones that are, Sands probably talked about it a hundred times, left in vehicles or recovered somewhere, and then they don't want to get caught with that said stolen one, so what they do is they try to file off the serial number, and, and then you can't link them, or they, you don't think they can be linked to that case. So we have ways around that, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to, to do. So anything else? And then if we get further, um, and it, I, I can give you some information, you can contact me later about some more identifiers from Carissa. Um, I know the warrant task force is out looking for her yesterday too. So, whether yeah, if you guys have a picture and want to send it to the email, that would be great. Yeah, or you can just contact our office and they can they can send you one too. Perfect. Um, and so they're out looking for her and anything from Crime Stoppers or calling the sheriff's office, police department, that'd be very helpful. All right, thank you. Okay, I don't have anything on the log. Um, aggravated assaults were reports. The arson was a garbage bin that was found on fire. No suspects in that. Sex offenses are reports. The weapons violation, that was a report that involves the juvenile. Um, that's all I have from the log. You're interested in a crash at 41st and or, or Highway, sorry, Veterans Parkway. Um, that was <clears throat> so it was 620 is when we were called <clears throat> and we had a uh, let's 
see. So one vehicle is going north, and then another vehicle um, was making a left turn. This one didn't list the cars, so we've got. A ram truck. I'm bouncing back and forth. So the ram truck was going northbound, and then the other vehicle is. That's a. Uh, Ford Edge was going southbound, going to make a left turn, um, and uh, basically collided at that point in time. Um, the truck, um, so the car, the Ford Edge, it was the driver's side and then ended up striking the passenger side of the truck. The truck spun around, uh, went over a sidewalk, hit a couple of poles, it looks like, traffic control box, some landscape blocks. Um, let's see, the car driver, no injuries on that. The other driver, the truck driver, went to hospital. The car, the driver of the car was given a citation for a red light violation. And they don't have any update on injuries outside of that. Do you need more on that one? Anything else? Do you guys have any updates on the standoff on 112th Street, 4200 block? Who's in it? That was a warrant service. That was in the afternoon. Um, I think it took a couple of hours and resolved without any incident. So it was there. There was they were looking for a guy that had a warrant, and then he had information that they he may have had a weapon in an apartment with him. So that's why they ended up calling in SWAT, and um, he was taken into custody without any incident, though. So who was all there? Yeah. yeah, I don't. I think the sheriff's office. We started the here. the warrant task force was looking for this person, and then. Um, ended up calling for police assistance, so the, the police department, sheriff's office, uh, were out there. Do you know anything about the car that crashed into the Midco Aquatic Center? I couldn't find. Ray asked me about that. I couldn't find any reports of anything that crashed into the Midco. Okay. Um, I. Yeah, I don't have any reports at all about things like that. Anything like that. I'm guessing they're referring to the, this one is the block away. Maybe. That's what I thought too, that it was probably related to that pursuit, but we didn't have any vehicles that crashed into the Midco. Okay. Um, and then any information about the 11th and Menlo? The yeah, that I do. Um, that was uh, basically a DWI. Um, we had a driver, a 29 year old woman was going at a very high rate of speed on right at 12th Street, 11th Street, and uh, Grange. Um, just as the curves start there, the car she was driving ended up sideswiping another vehicle that forced that car into the parking lot of the gas station. There was a paratransit bus that was parked. It hit that and then continued. And then there was another vehicle, a fourth vehicle that was moving and ended up hitting that one. So it doesn't look like there was any serious injuries. The driver um, is a 29 year old woman from St. Paul, Minnesota. She was arrested or charged with reckless driving DWI first and felony hit and run. Uh, right after the crash, she ended up trying to run away from the scene. So that's why we have the hit and run charge. Do you have her name? Yep. Uh, last is Mohammed, M-O-H-A-M-E-D. First is Miriam, M-A-R-I-A-M. 
Middle is Ali, A-L-I, 29 from St. Paul. Anything else? Okay, thanks. I want to give a update, oh. just click on that this brief description I had there. Just give me two seconds here. Uh, so the one individual outstanding that we're still looking for that we believe is related that has a warrant, uh, Carissa Becker, uh, five foot two, 120 pound Native American female, uh, I think last seen kind of wearing a, a, a light colored dress um, with maybe a shirt or a sweatshirt and, and sandals. So um, that's about all I have as from now, last seen in that area of the accident. So, all right. Thank you. All right, thank you.